Guten Morgen, meine Freunde, and welcome to a quick and very hastily thrown together video detailing my experience at the 2022 East Coast Blues and Roots Festival, otherwise known as the Blues Fest. Uh, Blues Fest has not been available for the last two years due to COVID, so this represents our 10th trip to this venerable institution. This doesn't represent to act as a review of the festival. I don't talk about all of the bands that we saw. I don't talk about all of the bands that were there. It's simply a cobbled together reflection of five days of mud, music, and montages. It's a travel montage. So, in order to get there, it's get on the freeway, drive south in a straight line for 175 miles, get off the freeway and set up. Despite this relatively simple task, we still got lost. Three times. You generally get a pretty nice crowd at Blues Fest, but there are always a fair percentage of idiots. You typically get the following species of idiot. One, people who are a little older than me who believe the greatest crime in humanity is to stand or even sit in front of them. Two, people who hold up smartphones or even tablets to film entire performances. These people are best disincentivized by accidentally brushing their elbow holding the device, or singing loudly and off-key with occasionally mangled lyrics directly into their microphone. A controversial one. People who do not move forward to fill the gaps in standing areas, a particular bugaboo with me. People who argue with security, and security for letting them get away with it just this one time. People who think a sign that says, no smoking or vaping really just means no smoking people who wear sombreros in the tents, man buns, hippies, and politicians seeking cheap exposure. Day one saw us start with War and the Treaty, who were, as always, great. Then legendary local bluesman Kevin Borich, Tamem Shud, and the great Ross Wilson, a titan of Australian music. Before I went down to check out one of the few genuine bluesmen at the festival, Chris Stone Kingfish Ingram, who, it must be said, was disappointing. His big problem is that he overplays, he oversings everything, and after one particular epic solo, which included two crowd walks, playing with his teeth and behind his head and every other trick in someone else's book, I asked Ivy, who was with me, do you remember what that song was about before he began to play the solo? And she couldn't. So that, to me, invalidates the whole point of a guitar solo. It's not adding to the song, it's obfuscating the song. The best act of Monday was Tame em Should, a obscure Australian band who began life under another name as a surf instrumental band in 1964, then evolved into an acid psych prog band which first broke up in 1972 and reformed many times subsequently. They were tight and trippy. Day 2 saw an influx of idiot categories 5, 7 and 8 as the virtue signalling cash cows of midnight oil rolled in and further rain turned the site into, in parts, a lake of mud. 
When it's fully sold out, Bluesfest becomes the 16th biggest city in Australia. The evening program in particular was slammer after slammer. The Angels, The Living End, The Hoodoo Gurus, and for me, more Chiba. Surprise act of the day was a 22-piece funk army from Sydney, The Regime, a band with James Brown's bottom and George Clinton's top. The evening program opened with The Church, a band that hasn't had a hit since 1986. As I was approaching the tent to see them, it occurred to me I didn't like The Church. It was my treacherous girlfriend at the time who liked their sad little boy pop. I just put up with it for, well, obvious reasons. So I sat and watched them this time with the prospect of no greater reward than a better seat for the angels. More Chiba afterwards were, as always, bloody brilliant. Day three. More rain. More mud more brilliant music. This time in the form of the luminous, if clumsily named, Ladies Night Bill. All our exes live in Texas, who were terrible last time we saw them here. Brisbane's sweetheart Kate miller Heidke, Missy Higgins, and Amy Shah, who was incredible, possibly the best act of the festival. The night ended with an act that we've hardly missed in 10 years at coming to Blues Fest. The Melbourne Scar Orchestra, who, along with Isaac and Ivy, got me up to energetically and rhythmically shake my crippled ass for an hour or so. This was a band idea. The remarkable thing about today and yesterday was the unprecedented levels of utter drunkenness around the festival site. We nicknamed it the Drunk Ass Blues Fest. This year's Blues Fest sold 101,000 tickets of a maximum 105,000. They'd budgeted for 80 to 85,000. 15% of those sales came in the week before the festival itself. Day 4. The Crossroads tent is now a morass with two rivers running through it. The toilet system is starting to break down. Lines at food queues are 45 minutes long and idiot category number nine descends on the festival as the opposition leader in full campaign mode co-ops the beginning of Jimmy Barnes's set to make a pitch to young people. Fortunately, I wasn't there. More on that later. But if there's one thing I hate, it's musicians bleating their politics from the stage and for Blues Fest to simply hand Free time to a party leader seeking election is reprehensible. Thankfully, he was roundly booed by the crowd. Previously on the day, we'd seen the wonderful weddings parties anything, the nice, insane Henry Wagons, who will jump off the stage and attack horniest members in the nicest possible way, the big-sounding pop rock of the fools, and the enthralling brutality of 1920s rockabilly foolishness. My sister thought they were the act of the festival. Renee Gayer, an act I especially wanted to see, was disappointing. Her once glorious voice now a shell of its old self before I stumbled out to see George Benson. It's hard to be disappointed with Benson. He's a great showman and a musician. I just wish he played his guitar some more. I arrived at Crowded House halfway through their set, but the awful sound put me off, so I wandered back to the campsite. Day five. The crowds have gone, the sky is blue, the stars have all gone home, and I, unbeknownst to me, have COVID. Passing off my fatigue is five days of doing something I'm just too damned old to do, and my runny nose is being four days of being cold and slightly damp. Time to sit and reflect on a festival which overcame barely the obstacles ahead of it, albeit they were some formidable obstacles, and then asked, did I overcome to any extent the obstacles in front of me? Did I wish it hadn't rained? Of course, but we've only had one in ten blues fests now where it didn't rain. Do I wish there were bigger name bands on the bill? No. If your legs won't dance to them, you cut your cloth accordingly, and nights like Friday and Saturday night were glorious. 
As for Blues Fest, it'll go on, making money hand over fist for the sainted Peter Noble, each year becoming a little less of what we remember it to have been. It's priced itself out of the market now for working people, and it's just a display of conspicuous consumption and excess of disposable income. That's the irony of a socialist political leader trying to score points from its stage. The festival now is far too expensive for the people he pretends to represent to attend. Do I wish my money were going to someone less as the current owner? Of course, but one thing I've learned in life is you can't always do business with simply delightful people. As for me, will I go on? In one way or the other, of course. They gave me two years, three years ago. Do I wish I'd had more presence of mind when it came to preparing? Of course, but I wish I still had the faculties I had before I got sick for a lot more reasons than leaving a plastic bag on my driveway. Or missing a freeway change that cost us three quarters of an hour. Do I wish I could stand for an hour in a tent without keeling over? Of course, but that I am there is more important than how I am there. Do I wish my kids would stay 15 forever and not have competing priorities and pressures drawing them away from mad tilts at windmills with their old dad? More than anything in the world on some days. Other days, I dread it. And we only got lost once on the way home.